the Protoss race used to be so much different in the Alpha version. From a monstrous mothership capable of removing units from reality to stalkers that look really forged. Look at this dude. Today we'll cover the most interesting parts of the early version of StarCraft 2. And since I have already mentioned them, let's start with stalkers. The design you see here was the predecessor of the final version, but there were some familiar iterations too. Instead of Stalker, Protoss players would use Dragoons, the OG unit that was present in StarCraft 1. There was something between Stalkers and Immortals, being just a bit stronger than a Stalker, but less powerful and expensive than an Immortal. Dragoons were considered before the two aforementioned units, so with new competitors it was difficult to find a proper place for the old school concept. Both Immortals and Stalkers were more creative and useful, while Dragoons were too basic in comparison to them. Why would players build them if they were better choices? So eventually they were completely replaced by Stalkers. If we move to buildings, there are many differences too. For example, a Photon Cannon that was previously called Face Cannon could actually move between Palon energy fields, and it only took it 3 seconds. It was just like a Spine Crawler, but probably the Zerg race had better lawyers and patents, so the moving ability remained for the Zerg race only. The Protoss race had more buildings than now. There was an Obelisk, a structure that was essentially a more expensive pylon, performing the same functions while also having some extra skills. In certain stages of development, it had such abilities as Proton Charge, which gave Protoss workers a small AoE buff to collect one additional mineral per trip for 30 seconds. The second ability was a shield battery that could recharge shields and energy for Protoss units. So you see, nothing is new under the sun, and shield batteries were reintroduced as a separate building many years later. There was also such a thing as Dark Pylon. It would cloak Protoss buildings in its area, making it really difficult to harass such structures with drops and sudden attacks. Did you know that Sentry used to look like this and this? It had some sick body transformation journeys, and it also had a completely different set of abilities. The first iteration was Star Relic. It was a flying late-game ship similar to Zeratul's from the campaign. It could detonate itself as a kamikaze unit and also spawn hallucinations. And in the stationary mode, it would cloak all nearby units. Then it was transformed into the Stasis Orb. Now it was a hovering unit that possessed a single passive ability, slowing down movement and fire rate of all enemies it attacked. Later it was replaced by force fields, and after some consideration the unit was redesigned into something called Nullifier. The new unit inherited force fields from its predecessor and almost immediately gained a new ability called Null Void. Null Void disabled casting of all energy-dependent abilities within the targeted area, and soon it gained even more abilities and it packed 5 of them, making it possibly the best caster in the game. It was also too good even in basic combat, so later it was redesigned once again and finally became the sentry we all know and love. Archons used to be much bigger and thicker, and let's take a look at a small presentation. What you see here is actually the old Archon, which was much bigger, and you could actually spawn it by just merging three Templars together. This is the mechanic we subsequently changed. And Phoenixes could overcharge themselves to cause even more damage to light units in the area. This is a new Protoss air superiority fighter. It has a special overload ability that allows it to fire its weapon at all nearby enemy forces. Unfortunately, after it overloads, the Phoenix goes offline for a short time. It can't move, it can't fight, and it's helpless against a counterattack. In the hands of a skilled player, the Phoenix can be extremely deadly. If you overload at the right time against the right enemies, you may destroy them all, and there will be no one left to take advantage of your temporary weakness. The last major design change happened to Mothership. In the Alpha version it was a beast that could crush any army almost by itself. Its first ability could counter any projectiles, and its main attack, the Planet Cracker, was just devastating. And as if it was not enough, it could also create a vortex that would literally turn 3D units into 2D models that would just disappear in the void. So in one word, it was really overpowered. And as you see, the Protoss race could be a lot more different than it is now. Check out these two videos to learn more about the other units and other changes that happened to StarCraft 2 over the years. And as usual, have a nice day and see you next time.